you see me and hear me. Yes. Okay. So I'm nice. I'm starting right now. Uh, I had to switch to my assistant's office because I don't know in the Zoom room it wouldn't work. This happened okay. last week and I had to completely cancel. That's right. I figured that's why you canceled. Okay, but you have, oh, there's a lot of people coming on. So those of you that are arriving right now, we're so sorry. Once again, we had technical problems here at the ranch, but um, we're back, we're back on. So yay. Yay. Um, so today, welcome to um, Chats with Barry, Voices of the Ranch. And I, my special guest today is Chef AJ. Hello. It's Hello, so Barry. I'm so glad you guys got the internet to work. Thank you guys so much for being here and sorry for the delay. We hope it'll be worth your wait. No, oh, I'm so glad. Yes, I'm so glad. So um, now Chef AJ has been to the ranch numerous times as a guest chef and a speaker, correct? Yes, I think I'm up to 12, a dozen. 12 times. That's. that's I think so. So now I, I know a lot of people know you, but there's a lot of people that might not know you. So I just want to talk briefly about you have, is it two books out? I've got, I've got three now and a fourth three. to come. Yeah. Okay. So you have one, the first book, is it called Unprocessed? Unprocessed. It used to be sold in the, in the store. It's got a potato on the cover. Right. And then the, um, the secret of ultimate weight loss. Right. right. That was my bestseller right here. I'm going to be doing one recipe from this one and my new book, I'm going to be doing two recipes from. Oh, I haven't seen that book yet. When did... I'm going to send you a copy. That's awesome. Um, Thank I know that just personally, one of my favorite things is the first time I met you, um, you gave me some of your granola. And oh, yeah. You sent it to my house because it's my one of my favorite things I've ever had in my entire I've life. I've got to make you some more. It was the nut crunch. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think so I, that good. was. I mean, um, and you're just fun to talk to. The other, um, you've been, now you've been teaching culinary classes for how many years now it's uh on my 21st year that's amazing and yeah you've been, and you're a vegan correct uh, yeah one of those crazy vegans and i've been vegan for almost 44 years 44 years so just to so here at the ranch um we're not vegan right because we eat fish and eggs and dairy so what, what but you're we... so healthy you're unprocessed though you know what i mean you're you're so in line with what i teach because so, you, you really support eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and whole grains and legumes. Yeah. So now you, you became a vegan because was it, because my daughter is a vegan, but she became a, a vegan more for humane reasons. That's why I became vegan because I wasn't a healthy vegan for 26 years. I was what my mentor, Dr. John McDougall calls the fat vegan because I weighed close to 200 pounds as a vegan. Then I had my own health challenge at the age of 43. I got precancerous polyps in my colon. Even though I wasn't eating meat or dairy, all I was eating was vegan junk food. And that's when I switched to not a a vegan diet so much, but a whole food, unprocessed plant-based diet. And I healed my polyps without drugs or surgery or actually getting cancer. I lost weight. And that's when I started writing books and, and trying to inspire others that you can really control your health destiny with what you eat. Food really does matter. No, it does. And it's so interesting you said that because I had a doctor, I interviewed a doctor a couple of weeks ago who he, his whole thing was about how to prevent colon cancer. And, um, you know, he, meat was one of the big culprits that right especially processed meats like bacon and hot dogs you know these things were not really meant to eat at least not in the amount that americans are eating them right now i um i watched also um i've been watching some clips on you to do my research and i saw <laughs> when you were you had this big bowl of cooked greens and you said every morning you eat two pounds or every day. Well, not, not two pounds, two pounds of vegetables a day, not two pounds of greens in one sitting, but okay. especially for people trying to lose weight. You know, when I first started coming to the ranch in 2012, they used to actually serve vegetables at breakfast. They stopped doing that. But for people that are struggling with weight, which I know not of a lot of the ranch people are, you get a pretty healthy crowd, but most Americans are, they're about 70% overweight. Vegetables are the secret to weight loss. Loss. And vegetables is the one food group that everybody agrees on, whether they're paleo or keto or Weight Watchers or low, everybody knows we're supposed to eat vegetables. And what's so great about vegetables is they're the food lowest in calorie density. They're like 100 calories a pound. You can't overeat them. Right. Most Americans aren't eating any. But greens, things like broccoli, the cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale, turnip greens, mustard greens, chard, things like that. They have a compound in them called thylakoids. And what these thylakoids do are literally block fat absorption and turn off the hunger switch. So if people are having cravings throughout the day for unhealthier foods, like high sugar foods, 
the greens are cravings annihilators. So if you start your day in a savory way, which you can do at the ranch, by the way, because, you know, ranch, they have the beans for breakfast. When you start your day without activating that sweet tooth and include a dose of these greens, dark leafy green vegetables, it just sets you up for success because it, it diminishes or annihilates the sweet cravings. And when I learned that from Dr. Greger's book, How Not to Diet, it was like mind blowing. It really does work. So greens at every meal if you can. And now, I, why, why is it that you have cooked greens in the morning? Instead well, of- it, if I have to, you can eat them raw, but realize that when you cook vegetables, you're reducing the volume and you're making them a little, especially greens are a little bit hard to eat for some people. You can certainly eat them raw, but you're going to have to be willing to eat a much larger volume. When you cook your greens, think about it. If anybody has ever bought a bag of frozen spinach, maybe to make a dip or a lasagna, we're actually making a spinach dip today. If you squeeze out the water, that pound fits in the palm of your hand. This bag is only six ounces. If I had to eat a pound of this, I'd be chewing all morning if it was raw. So that's why I prefer cooking them because then you can get more of these beneficial compounds in and you can eat more and weigh less and be healthier. Now, and you, um, cause there's pictures of you and it's, it's pretty phenomenal. You've lost, is it 60 pounds? 60 pounds. I mean, for my highest weight, I'm five, five now. I used to be five, six and I was in an accident and I lost one bone, but I, my highest weight that I remember weighing was 180. That's when I was on the tonight show and people can find that clip. I think I actually got heavier, but that's the last time I remember stepping on a scale. So I've kept off 60 pounds now. Right. No, uh, I want to, so three people have sent me a message about, I don't have enough light on my face. Just so you guys know that I switched offices. I have a beautiful zoom room because we lost internet and this is the only place I could get internet right now. And so it's, it, this is just a temporary fix. So I know I need more light on my face just so everyone knows I'm aware of it. Um, so I, the, you know, I, the, something that I love about you is that we have in common the, the um, humor thing, because you've done stand up. I love humor. I watched you on the Tonight Show, and I can't believe you had you had the Tonight Show for. I think you you got to be on there for fifteen minutes was unheard of. With yeah, Johnny ten Carson. minutes with Johnny Carson as a relative unknown to open the show on September first, nineteen eighty seven, and that was all because I I'm told because I was gracious because I had been bumped so many times. And I never got upset about it because every time you're bumped, you get paid. And $1,500 was a lot of money in 1987. Yeah. And I just said, you know, I was like, I'll sit in the green room all day. Keep bumping me. And 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 they said, because I I guess a lot of people were like, you said you were going to have me on. Because, you know, it would, be, it would appear in a magazine called the TV Guide and in the newspaper. We didn't have text and cell phone, or even I don't think answering machines back then. So every time I was booked, I would like be making 100 phone calls to tell people I was going to be on. And then. I wasn't. And then when I finally was, they said, you know, you've been so gracious about this. We're just going to open with you. And I'm like, oh boy, no pressure there. It was great. I, I loved it. Thank it was, you. It was fun to watch. Now, can you, um, before we do your cooking thing, um, is there, is there certain foods that you just will not eat or just? Yes. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So for, I, I'm, I'm vegan. Like your daughter, I went vegan for ethical reasons. So I'm not going to eat animal products. And even like George Bernard Shaw, even if it was to save my life, I'm not going to eat an animal, Mm -hmm. not knowingly. But because I consider myself a food addict in recovery, I can't eat things like processed foods like sugar and flour and oil. Because when you process food, it it changes the food. So I only eat my food whole. So those would be the things I would say, but mainly sugar, flour, and then alcohol, of course. Oh, that's the bummer for me, the alcohol part. Well, um. Do you, do you, are, do, are vegetables better for you in raw form than cooked form? Do you lose something when you cook them? Okay, so uh, technically I'm gonna say yes with a caveat. There are certain micronutrients that are actually more bioavailable when vegetables are lightly steamed. The carotenoid in sweet potatoes and carrots, the lutein in greens and the lycopene in tomatoes. So the thing is, is you lose about 30% of the vitamins and minerals when you cook your vegetables. but the cooking method matters. So for example, I'm going to be using the Instant Pot today. So anything I lose, I'm not losing because I'm not throwing out that water. So when I do cook my greens, believe it, I'm drinking that broth. I drink it as a morning beverage, as pot liquor, or I save it to make soups and stews. So I don't feel I'm losing anything. There are people that are raw foodists that do it successfully, but you have to be willing to eat a much larger quantity of food. It's, it, you're, it's hard. Right, right now. So one of the things that we're be fun, I thought it'd be fun for us to talk about was what we could eat for the Super Bowl because I think the Super Bowl is coming up this weekend and I mean everyone's been stuck at home and I think everyone's going to be 
And the average person, I, I think I read the average person eats six to 7,000 calories during the game. Well, you can eat <laughs> everything I'm making and I doubt it's gonna even be 600 because I'm gonna revolutionize Super Bowl snacks, things that are very familiar, even though they're vegan and these are gonna be super healthy, but more importantly, they're gonna be delicious. Great, so let's, what are we gonna, what are we making? Great, so, so the first thing I'm gonna make is a chili because chili is very associated with game day, but this chili has no beans. So there's not gonna be any farting at all from this chili. <laughs> this is called uh, red no lentil chili. And the reason it's called that is because one of my popular recipes in my second book was a red lentil chili and it's delicious. I was getting ready to make it one day and I, and I had done the first steps, pureeing the tomato and the, mm -hmm bell pepper, and I had everything ready and I realized I had no lentils. Well, I live 20 minutes from the closest store now. And I'm like, I, it was dinner time and I'm like, what can I substitute for lentils? And I had this brilliant idea and I love thinking of ways to get people more vegetables using rice cauliflower, which has this texture and a little bit of millet. Millet is a delicious, ancient and underused grain. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come on over here to my Instant Pot, and this is my favorite kitchen appliance. This is the three quart, and I have already in it the water, which I have preheated just to save a little bit of time. Now, because I know that Zoom, it's kind of noisy, all I did in advance was blend my, and I can give you the recipe, you can post it, but this is basically a puree of garlic, red bell pepper, and tomato. And so I'm gonna pour this in my Instant Pot carefully. This is the only thing I say, like I said, that I did in advance because I didn't want you to have to suffer through that uh, the Zoom blending. No. And is the Instant it, Pot like, a, is that like a crock pot? Uh, no, an Instant Pot, you had Jill Nussen now on, she used it. Right. Instant Pot, okay. yeah. So a crock pot cooks everything at low temperature for a long period. A, a pressure cooker, the Instant Pot, cooks it at very high temperature for a long time. Okay. Um, I've lost, uh, I, I didn't hear the last thing you said. Your voice went away. No, no, but I, it, I, it, I was it, just listening. Oh yeah, and, and so, so boiling is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, pressure cooking is 239. So instead of a pound of the red lentils, I'm putting in a pound of the rice cauliflower and I'm putting in my chopped onion. This is red onion, which I love in a chili. And I am adding where, ah, I know what goes in here a third of a cup of millet, and this is uncooked millet, and this just gives it this kind of meaty texture like you wouldn't believe. There we go. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is my spices. And one of the things I recommend to everybody, if you have recipes you do over and over, and most people do, measure your spices in advance. You will save so much time when you make your family's favorite recipes. So now I'm just gonna put the top on, and I'm going to put the on, on high pressure, for 10, I think it's 10 minutes. I'll check my cookbook in a second, but it's okay because we can always change the time. And then we'll move on to the next two recipes while this is pressure cooking. I'm just going to check. That, can I, I have two things I wanted to say. The, mm -hmm. the millet, is you can have millet if, if you're gluten-free, correct? Absolutely. And you know what? They sometimes serve it at the ranch for lunch when they do a, a lunch grape. Millet is, and, and they put sometimes blueberries in. Millet is just absolutely delicious. And I wish more people would have it, especially people that avoid rice. Some people are afraid of rice because of the arsenic. Millet's a very toothsome grain. We think of it as bird seed, but it's, it's really delicious. And you can be used in a savory manner or a sweet. And I wish people would give it a try because it's so good. All right, someone, so, wants, someone wants to know what, what are the spices that you put in there? They are, again, I'll be happy to give everybody the okay, recipe. Okay, we'll send the recipe out. Absolutely, <laughs> and, but uh, they are parsley flakes, uh, salt-free chili powder, smoked paprika, chipotle powder, oregano, and red, red chili flakes. And it's not very spicy. It's smoky more than spicy. Okay, so now I'm gonna make one of my favorite recipes, an artichoke cheese dip. It's not gonna, it's gonna be non-dairy, but it's, it's like the hot artichoke dip you get at, recipe, at restaurants like the Cheesecake Factory, TGI Fridays, but it's got all healthy ingredients. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just chop my spinach a little bit and I'm gonna use a food processor for this because I usually use a chopping bowl, but not everybody wants to buy the Holland bowl. It's this wonderful tool that you can chop things in by hand, but you can use a food processor to chop things as long as you don't over process and make sure that it's dry because otherwise you'll end up with you know, pesto or a smoothie. So basically I'm just gonna kind of pulse it a little bit just to get it nice and chopped. 
you can see like when we talked about the difference between eating cooked greens versus raw greens, even just by doing this level of processing, it's actually reducing the volume, which is why if you eat a chopped salad, it's easier to eat more vegetables than if you just don't do a little bit of processing. So let me just reduce these a little bit more. Yeah, you don't, I don't want to make a smoothie here. I just want to get it nice and chopped. That's good. And now I'm just going to put it in a bowl. I'm actually going to be using one of the prizes I won in bingo with Barry today. <laughs> <laughs> I wish right. you, I wish I I wish I could take you into my my bathroom because I have this like sunken tub and all the prizes I've won in bingo are are around the tub and it's just so I love them. It just gives me such good memories and warm feelings. Okay, so now I'm going to make the artichoke part. So what I'm going to start with, what would artichoke dip be without artichokes? This is a bag of frozen artichokes from Trader Joe's, and I def simply defrosted it. So I'm going to put it in the food processor, and then I'm going to add my, where is it? Here it is. It's roasted garlic. So I find that when you roast garlic, it's much mellower. And, and you can use raw garlic, but it's so much stronger. And if you are willing to take the time to roast it, it just gives it a nicer, rounder flavor. So when you're roasting it, you need to use a little bit more. And I use another tool, a machine called a air fryer to roast my garlic. And I don't need to use any oil or salt or anything. Just put it in for 10 minutes at 370. And you can just see it just, it's just... I don't know, it's just so much more delicious. It's just like creamy and I love roasted garlic. And then I'm gonna add a product that some people might be unfamiliar with, but if they're vegan, they know it is new, it's called nutritional yeast. And it's, it's different than brewer, brewer's yeast. It just gives things this umami or cheesy flavor. It, it, some people, if you, if you didn't want it or couldn't find it, you could leave it out. I've got a couple tablespoons of lemon juice and I think that's it. So now I'm gonna process this. And this is going to be served hot, just like at the restaurant. Oh, I forgot a very important ingredient. What's going to substitute for the dairy to make it creamy? Some steamed artichoke. This was a 12 ounce bag of florets. Uh, this is cauliflower from Trader Joe's. And I just steamed it in this little microwave steamer. If you don't want to use a microwave, you can steam it however you do for six minutes. But I love this little tool for convenience. And this artichoke is not only going to add nutrition, because it's a cruciferous vegetable, but it has no taste by itself and it's going to give it a very, very creamy texture. So now what I have to do is process. it. Always a good idea probably to scrape the sides down. Now I don't want to, I, there's a little bit of spinach in there from when I chopped it and that's fine, but I don't want to add the spinach while I'm pureeing it because then it won't look familiar. It will turn this whole thing green. And now we're going to add as much, this is the whole six ounces, and it's really up to the person how much they want to add. I'm not going to puree it, I'm just going to pulse it. So I like a lot of spinach, so I'm going to add, I probably added two thirds. They could probably omit the spinach if they didn't want it, and now I'm going to just pulse real quick. Because I want you to still be able to see the spinach. And now I'm going to put it in a, a way to heat it up. So again, I'm not opposed to using a microwave. If you are, then get an oven safe dish. But now I'm going to put it back in this container to heat it up. And again, I could have also stirred the spinach in by hand. I just wanted to see a little bit of the spinach in there. I'm going to show you guys a great trick for cleaning the blade of your food processor. A lot of stuff sticks on the blade and some people just ignore it. But if you put your top back on, and just pulse for like a quick second through the magic of something called centrifugal force. My blade has now been completely cleaned and then I can get what's left in here out. So now I'm thinking because I'm not serving this to company because I'm going to eat this myself. I like to put as many greens in as possible. So I'm going to put the rest of the spinach in just because I don't know what else to do with it. And I like to eat a lot of greens. 
So the way we're gonna serve this is with some chips. And I know that at Rancho on Monday night, they have that social and they serve a, a lower fat guacamole that they make with peas and they serve a baked chip. And what I love about Rancho is that they use very little oil in their food and sometimes they don't use it at all. And I do too, because of the principle of calorie density. And so what I did is I baked the chips in the oven I just took a, a good quality corn tortilla. I get one at a local Latino store that makes them fresh with literally just corn, water, and lime. I cut them into fours and I put them in a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. And you have, I did these last night. Most, these smell, I mean, let me, let me just break one for you. I don't know if can you hear that crunch? Uh -huh. I don't want to eat on camera, but these are the most delicious chips. The most delicious tortillas will make the most delicious chips. So I don't recommend getting a, like a regular grocery store brand with all the additives. Go to somebody that knows how to make them like Rancho. So what I'm going to do is I would just now put this in the microwave and heat this up for three or four minutes. And then I would transfer it to a, a beautiful serving dish. But I'm telling you, this tastes just like the restaurant. I promise. It's so good. It's so creamy. Can and I know, so now um, I'm- Can I ask you really quick? Someone asked sure. questions. What's the name of these two recipes? Are they in your books? And what Yes, book and, and, and I'm happy to give Barry, I'll send him a, an email with all of them. So the red no lentil chili and the artichoke cheese dip comes from the newest book, Own Your Health. Okay. The next recipe that I'm making, pizza hummus, comes from Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. This was actually submitted by a friend of mine who is a Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine cooking instructor named Sharon McRae. And I changed her recipe just ever so slightly. And those are the tweaks I'm gonna show you right now while I do the next recipe. So normally I would clean the food processor, but since I'm the one gonna eat it, I don't mind if there's a little of this in there. So okay. uh, hummus is, will start with some beans and I have here garbanzo beans. These are, I, I don't mind using canned food especially when it has no additives. This is a salt-free, BPA-free can. You can find it in stores like Sprouts, Whole Foods, and, oh, you can make your own. It's very quick to cook beans in the Instant Pot. It takes between 10 and 20 minutes. So I have two cups, or excuse me, two cans, which is about three cups, and I drained the liquid. This is very important to creamy hummus. This is called aquafaba. This is the bean liquid. And chefs have revolutionized this by using it to make everything from meringues. It, it's, it's like almost magical, but what it's gonna do in the hummus is in place of using water, it just makes it a lot creamier. So we're gonna add this as our water when the time comes. But first I'm going to put my two cups of the chickpeas. And I think Sharon McRae is watching because she texted me. So thank you for this wonderful recipe. <laughs> And I'm going to add the sun-dried tomatoes. Now I soak these in a little bit of water just so that it would be easier for the food processor. I just used a three ounce bag from Trader Joe's, which has no, no additives, at least no oil or salt. And it's so funny because this taste, is tastes like pizza. And then once again, the nutritional yeast, four tablespoons. Now, these are the two things I did different than Sharon's recipes. Um, she calls for red onion and garlic. I still do that. I just like to roast it first. I find that raw onion and raw garlic can be overwhelming to some people's eyes and palate. So I did what she said. I just like to roast it first for 10 minutes in the air fryer. Sharon's recipe called for oregano and basil, which are very pizza-like spices. The only thing I did differently is there is this really cool salt-free spice called pepperoni spice. And I cannot tell you how much it tastes like pepperoni. It's amazing. We put it on potatoes when we're making air fries, on mushrooms. So the only thing I did different is I added one teaspoon of the pepperoni spice. I've got everything in my food processor. I'm gonna to start to process. Now, while it's running, I'm going to just slowly drizzle in the aquafaba. Remember, any recipe you do, you can always add, but you can't take away. So I'm just going to get this moving. I'm probably going to add all of it, I think. But let's get this processing. I think I'm going to just add all of it. 
Someone wants to know, where do you get the pepperoni spice from? Yes. So thank you for asking. It's a friend of mine in Tiburon named Nick DeVoren. And the website is, lo I'll put this in the show notes or the, when I give Barry the recipes, localspicery.com. If you mention my name, he'll give you two free small samples of other flavors. But he does organic, small batch, non-irritated spices that are just so different than what you'll find other places. So there we have it. I'm telling you, you swear you're eating pizza. So I take my beautiful bingo with berry prize bowl in the middle. Uh, the more you process it, the creamier it'll be. This stuff, you could actually put this on a pizza a, a, instead of marinara sauce. It's so delicious. It's such a wonderful recipe. Kids like it, grownups like it, and it's healthy and it's so yummy. I, you could put it over a baked potato. It's really, really delicious. Oh, and it smells so good. It looks I think delicious. you're eating pizza. So really easy. I don't know if the chili will be ready in time. I don't know how long you can stay on, but here you have, and people would love this for game day. I swear. You just use your chips again, right? Yep. I just put the chips on the outside to do that. And I'll also serve the chips. Once, once I heat this up in the microwave, it'll be in a prettier dish, of course. And people, people love these kind of snacks, but you don't have to eat 6,000 calories. You don't even have to eat 600 calories because when you eat food this low in caloric density, you can pretty much eat as much as you want. So that's why I like to eat this way. Wow, that's, no, that's awesome. So um, Thank you. So let's, um, just so for the people watching, um, Chef AJ will send me the, We'll post the three names of her books and we'll post which book the recipes are in. And she'll also send me these three recipes. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make like a little, yeah, all three recipes and the link to the pepperoni spice will be included. Of course, be my pleasure. So what I will do is those of you who are watching, if you go to our website on Voices of the Ranch, starting tomorrow, this interview will be posted so you can rewatch it. And also I'll attach the link to, to it to get the recipes onto, onto that post. Or you can always email me directly and I can get it to you. And it's bshingle at ranchofleporta.net. Um, oh, you have so many wonderful comments. I can't even keep up. Oh, with thank you. I wish I could see them, but thank you. Yeah, maybe he, Barry says I have wonderful comments, but I can't see them. Yeah, they, I can't. Um, someone wants to I, know, um, can you freeze these things? Oh, that is such a great question. And I can let you know next week because I, I've never tried, to be honest. Yeah. You know, Sharon, if you're watching, tell me what you think if you can freeze hummus. What, what I always recommend to people is if you're going to freeze something, don't freeze the whole thing. Freeze like a quarter of a cup and then and then tell. I don't know. I, I, I think most things can be frozen. They Sometimes freezing, you lose a little bit of quality. I, I'll let you know. I will freeze some of this and I'll bring it out Sunday. That's a great idea. I, just, just usually a, I just want to eat it though. Yeah, no, it looks, oh my God, it looks, it looks so delicious. So um, I could eat probably all of that and not. Yeah, and you can, because there's, the thing is, is when you eat, not just vegan, but you know, one of the things when, when I, when I come to the ranch, which is going to be in August, Victoria all, often lets me give one lecture and the one lecture that I often give, uh, and it was approved by uh, her name was Yvonne. She used to be the dietitian yeah, there because she liked what I teach because it was in line with ranch principles. It was, it's called eat up, slim down and get healthy. And so I don't teach calorie counting, but I teach calorie density, which is understanding that food 
food groups have an average calorie density and vegetables at 100 calories a pound and fruit at 300 calories a pound, you don't have to monitor how much you eat of food that is low in caloric density. Even the beans are only about 550 calories a pound. So when we eat this low in caloric density, we can eat ad libitum. It's when we add things that are higher in caloric density, like processed oils, which are 400 calories a pound, nuts, which are 3,200 calories a pound, sugar, which is 1,800 calories a pound, flour, which is 1,500 calories a pound. Then we have to really, it's not that we cannot eat these, but we have to be more mindful. But when you eat what I call to the left of the red line, you really don't have to weigh and measure your food or worry about how much you eat or why you eat or when you eat. So for people that really like to eat a lot, this, this system is very delicious and, and satisfying. And I have another question for you because um, my, since my daughter is vegan, I have a lot of experience with her. And I feel like vegans tend to use a lot of nuts for their protein. Nuts are so high and they're very dense. Yeah, so I don't eat any nuts, okay? I eat zero nuts and the only and, and even zero seeds. The only seeds I eat is chia seeds and recipes. So nuts are healthy. They're a very good source of protein, but they're very high in fat and very high in calories. So for somebody struggling with weight issues or somebody that has struggled, you got to be mindful of them. And they recommend about an ounce a day, which is about a palmful. I've never been able to moderate my use of nuts, so I don't eat any of them. But you have to understand that green vegetables have as much protein, actually more protein per calorie than steak. People don't realize that 100 grams of broccoli has 11.2 grams of protein. 100 ca calories of steak has only 5.4. How could these cows and elephants and rhinoceroses, how could they grow so big eating plants if plants didn't have protein? So plants have plenty of protein, and so you don't need to have animal products to get protein. And that's kind of a myth that's been around forever. But if somebody is not to have weight issues, nuts are very healthy. They're just calorically dense. So I recommend more of a starch-based approach where people are eating whole grains, quinoa, millet, teff, amaranth, oats, corn, legumes, beans, split peas, lentils, or the starchy vegetables like potatoes, sweet potatoes, or the butternut squash, you know, kabocha squash. So those are what I concentrate my diet on. Wow, that's very good. People keep writing all kinds of comments, but I can't keep up with them all. Well, so hopefully I can see the chat. But you know, my, the biggest compliment I got, Barry, was the first time I, you know, like when I taught, taught at the ranch the first time, I, I think they weren't so sure about me. Uh, Denise was the executive chef then because it, I wasn't just plant-based, but I didn't use sugar, oil, or salt. And they don't use a lot of those at the ranch anyway, but they're like, they kind of looked at me like I had three eyes. But I remember after the first class, anytime there's food left over, they'll give it to the staff, you know, that, you know, like the driver or whoever. And the fact that I got thumbs up from the people that worked there was like just a wonderful feeling that, and I was invited back, but like my, you know, cause you know, the food's good. Yeah, no, it's great. So I have one last question before I let you go. So do you, um, like if someone wanted to have that pizza, is there any healthy dough or bread that people would eat? Yes. So, so what I recommend, and again, not everybody has to avoid flour or gluten, especially if they don't struggle with gluten problems or weight problems. But in my book, what I do is I make a crust out of cauliflower. So we have a cauliflower pizza crust that's made with steamed cauliflower, beans, garbanzo beans and a, and a sweet potato, a white sweet potato. And, and you can make it even without the beans. And so I, you can make a really delicious crust without using flour. That's great. That's yeah. awesome. So listen, wow, we this has been super fun, we, but we're like already 15 minutes over time. So thank you so much. I, I so enjoy seeing you and talking to you. And, thank uh, you. So I, I think I'm gonna be there the week of your birthday. Do you take your birthday week off? Sometimes I do. It's August 16th week. That's when I'm coming. That, the reason I take it off is because my daughter and I share the same birthday. So we always. Oh, you mean that would be so not fun to come a week that yeah, there's no bingo. Well, we don't have any bingo right now because of COVID. So hopefully I'm hoping by this spring things are looking better and I'm very hopeful. So, yeah. Well, thank you for having me. And guys, if you haven't been to Rancho La Puerta, you got to put it on your bucket list. Of all the places I've speak, spoke, all the cruises, there's nothing that I love more than Rancho. That is my number one happy place. Oh, thank you so much. And so thank you, Barry. Thanks you, everyone for watching. We'll get you those recipes very soon. And you can a day. Watch again, as I said, starting tomorrow, just at, go to Voices of the Ranch and you'll see it again. Thanks, AJ. Sorry. Thanks for doing this. Take care, everybody. Happy Super Bowl. Hope Happy your team Super wins. Bowl. Thank you so much.